So as we talked about, we have our stepping stones. We'll use, actually, I'm gonna use th three as an example, just because then I can go into a bit more detail. Okay, so three, but for this essay, you will be doing more. Okay, so one, two, three. Three stepping stones. Now, one of the things that you can do, and these are the, the questions that are coming up while we're doing our brainstorms and when you're doing your research. Each stepping stone is you unfolding the idea and saying, okay, I am going to look into this. Now, when we're doing, and I can't remember if we've done this, um, usually when we're talking about this, I'll say, think about what you're gonna say and the topic you're gonna say it, and this is the topic of your paragraph. Yeah. Maybe it's a word or a, a few words. So rather than, a topic we're actually going to phrase that topic like a question right. and why do you think we're going to phrase things like questions yeah that's quite a good answer yeah because when we're writing an essay we are we're like detectives we are investigating so when you are investigating something like you found with your research you'll read one thing and you go well what about this and what about that have you found that when you're doing your research you're like you'll read something and then there's a question that comes to mind because it doesn't make sense So that's what we're going to do here. No, no, when you're doing your research, have you found that you'll go, well, what does that mean? And that leads you on to another source. Or what does someone mean by that? I'm not sure if I agree. Have you found you've got those thoughts when you're researching? Okay, well, notice when you have them. I want you to be aware of it. Try and try and be aware of all the reactions you're having to the research you're doing. Because what leads you on to another source? Or another Google search? A question, yeah. Do you, like, I, now from when you're doing your research on, I want you to try and be oh, consciously aware of what questions are leading you forward because that will help you decide in what order we're going, you're going to do a question. And actually, we're, we're gonna do an example together. And we'll use my ginormous feminism question, because then you can see all the different parts. Okay, so in each body paragraph, so you'll have a question, and you will answer this question. What do you think you need in each body paragraph, apart from words and sentences, to help you answer this question? Mm -hmm. We all need evidence. Yep, what else? Quotes, yeah, evidence is part of the quotes. So quotes can be, evidence can be quotes, um, evidence is also images. So for you, you, you could actually, it would make very much sense to have images. Um, you may or may not want images. So quotes, images, what else could be evidence, do you think? Yeah. So articles, again, you'll be using quotes from that. Um, primary, has have you heard of primary and secondary sources? Okay, uh, so just to recap for everyone, primary sources are made at the time, secondary sources are commenting on the time. So, so evidence is also secondary source evidence. 
So secondary source evidence, you'll be using Oh, um, the newspaper articles. You may not. Actually, it depends. Um, sometimes there are newspaper archives online. Yeah, I'd go Googling. And sometimes, I mean, you may not be able to get there, but like sometimes libraries put their archives online. They've started digitizing everything. And the Gutenberg project is actually um, this online project of lots of old texts that they've been putting online. So that might be interesting for you, the Gutenberg project. I don't know whether it has comic book stuff. It might, I don't know. So secondary source evidence is also, it's quotes from scholars. And you will, with these evid this evidence, what do you need to do? Yeah, compare, evaluate, and everything we've been doing over this last week, thinking about critical thinking and reading, is all to do with evaluation. It's all to do with what are its strengths, what are its weaknesses, does it support or not support your evidence? So this is what you need to be comment. So all this analysis and questions and observations you've got, I want to know about it in your body paragraphs. Because this is because we're choosing a topic that's interesting to you individually, I want to know your opinion. It's not what you think I want to know. It's I want your opinion. Mm. And one thing I wanted to specifically go over is what is the difference between an explanation and an argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost, almost. The definition of an explanation is that it's descriptive. It can look like an argument, but the main difference between an explanation and an argument is that an argument tries to persuade its reader to a different point of view. An explanation does not try to persuade you of anything. So I want argument. This is what you're aiming for in your essay. I want arguments. Explanations are necessary at points. But this is why also we have questions. It does not persuade. Reader. So when you're going through, I want you to constantly be thinking, what is my argument? What am I trying to persuade the reader to think? And then this will help you evaluate your evidence and use it to persuade your reader of something. So it, when we do go over your, when you send me your plans or your first drafts, you may get comments that say too descriptive. You may have already had comments from me like that. When it's too descriptive, it means there is no argument. And I don't understand why you're giving me this information. It doesn't help me understand your point of view and the problem you're trying to solve in this essay. So in this, what I will, I'll give you some numbers as well to aim for. So for each, question, each paragraph, three pieces of evidence. Is kind of aim for that. You can include more. 
if you want to. Just make sure it's relevant. I also am going to look for, when you find different points of view, I want you to include those in your paragraph and then tell me why they aren't actually a problem. And remember what we, we looked at when we were thinking about critical thinking, being able to think and read critically, which is what you're doing when you're including counter arguments, is you're showing that you have understood the literature that is out there, the points of view that are out there, but that, and you are able to understand them, process them, evaluate them, so this is what you're going to do. You're going to evaluate a counter argument and then say, well, actually, here's the problem with it and here's my solution. Because we want to appreciate the arguments if they're good, even if they contradict you. And we don't want evidence or some sort of information in our essay, even if it supports our point, that is weak, unless you're using it to evaluate it. But still, you if it is a weak argument, even if it supports your point, you need to evaluate that and be, show that you are aware of the weakness, because otherwise, if you don't, you will weaken your entire argument. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I just included, um, this is like paragraph one, paragraph two. Wait, I'll make that more clear. Para one, para two, para three, para E, C, T. There you go. Does that make sense? Yeah, so you're going to have, like I said, you're going to have a minimum of five body paragraphs. So I've just written out three just to make it look like there's any sort of essay. Thanks for joining me in today's class. If you'd like to know more about essay writing, I have a whole blog series all about how to write an essay. But not just that, how to brainstorm the question, plan, research, and once you've written the the essay how to proofread and edit it if you've got a question don't forget to leave it in the comments and of course don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss a video ever again good luck with your studying and I'll see you in the next one